Christopher Maloney, it would be so easy for you to turn the character that you play on Underground into a cartoon villain. How did you find the nuance in him? Um, you know, a lot of it was on the page. A lot of it was um, the difficulties of, um, you know, I think that we all face as being human, being human beings, uh, trying to do the right thing under difficult circumstances. You know, when, you're, when your back is against the wall, uh, how would you react? Um, so uh, it was kind of in the script. Mm -hmm. Well, talk about reading that first script that you got, because your character starts off acting one way, and then at the end, there's this big switch. Yes. So what was your reaction when you read that for the first time? Uh, I called my agent immediately, and I said, sign me up. Uh, because you know, I knew that if if they were willing to having op have an opening, a presentation, this is this is who this character is, and we are inviting you to follow his journey. I just thought, you know, that that that's pretty ballsy to do that. And uh, so, and I uh, because of the writing and how how they had written the script, uh, I had full confidence that they could pull it pull it off. Mm -hmm. Well, talk about playing that first episode as an actor, because, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, the reveal at the end, it could be just sort of a cheap thing, you know? So how did you, you know, pepper in their little subtle hints or just kind of, you know, so that it wouldn't be such a complete twist, you know? Um, well, for whatever reason, um, I I always I played the guy quietly, if that makes sense. I felt that, and the quiet can be interpreted, in my opinion, in a variety of ways. Uh, whether it's a stoicism, whether it's a man um, who doesn't want to be to, to walk the road with too much bravado because uh, possibly he's ashamed of uh, at what he's doing. Or maybe you know the quiet is, you know, like a wolf. You know, a, a wolf, you know, he's a predator, so he had must move mm -hmm. silently. So, but quiet was to me, uh, kind of a core element of how this guy operated and who he was. And I thought there was a kind of a a mystery in that quiet. You know, uh, there've been a lot of. I, I haven't played too many quiet characters, I guess, and that was what was fun, mm -hmm. nice. It's really great, I mean, having seen that first episode and then there's a later episode when you're uh, trying to recapture Junai Smollett Bell's character and you're using the same kind of tactic that we've seen you mm -hmm. use in the first episode, but now there's like, there's that knowledge behind it, like, oh my God, no, that <laughs> she's in trouble. Um, yeah. So it's it's really interesting watching your character develop too. Um, I thought that was actually a great scene, by the way. I thought that you know to write that scene that way, you know, gave a lot of information about this guy, which is you know he he's a salesman, and he's mm -hmm. got his salesman shtick down, which is I know the way north. You know, I am selling hope to mm -hmm. the hopeless, and I thought that was uh, de devious. <laughs> but uh, compelling and very powerful. But anyway, I interrupted, go ahead. I, I just remember that scene that I, and I enjoyed it. No, 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 that's what I, 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 I agree with you. Um, so there's a couple of really, first of all, it's a really great cast and watching you guys interact together is one of the pleasures of this show. Um, your son in the show, talk about that relationship. You know, this was a kid that we, uh, they got, out of Mississippi, um, he acts. He likes to act. You know, he's a school kid, but you know, he, he you know, he's he, but you know, he's he's just a local kid. And uh, you know, his face, that look, that openness, that uh, naivete, that um, the innocence. You know, I, I thought uh, that gave him gravitas almost which I thought was again an interesting juxtaposition and also to have that baby-faced kid 
grow right before the audience's eyes, both both in his internal maturity and outwardly. Because you know, the kid, as as we were shooting shooting, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was actually he actually his voice changed a little bit. <laughs> He's kind of like, hurry up, roll the camera, because we're about to have a teenager on our hands. <laughs> it was, it was uh, funny. Yeah, so that was, um, you know, I thought that relationship was uh, powerful. I, you know, I have a lot of women coming up to me and saying, oh, what you're doing to that boy is <laughs> fine. All that. And I'm like, good. We're hitting the right note. Yeah. What? What's interesting is that it adds an extra bit of nuance to your character as well, because I mean, there's this, um, you know, you're all of a sudden on your own as a, as a dad, you know, mm -hmm. like you're, you're learning how to be a single parent in a way, you know, not, not to give anything away about the show, but at least in those early episodes. Yeah. I think, you know, uh, my, my son is important. Um, to keep reminding, hopefully, the audience of uh, my character's humanity um, and where he falls short in, in, in certain responsibilities or, you know, maybe it's a showcasing a man doing the best he can under his circumstances. So, you know, judge, judge thee not, lest thee be judged. I don't know, whatever that is. <laughs> Well, I love those scenes uh, in the first few episodes where you see the two of you at home and yeah. then Clark Peters' character as well. I mean, this you're a guy who hunts down runaway slaves, brings them back for a bounty, and yet you have this relationship with a slave of your own. There, there's this kind of mutual respect there. Can you yeah. talk a bit about that? Yeah, well, you know, he, he basically raised me, and I think, you know, the as much as it can be done, you know, to me, the Clark Peters character was a part of the family and he was seen as, you know, maybe not so much as an equal, but, you know, truly a part of the family. Um, but I think it's, it's actually the triangle of me, uh, Clark Peters, my son, that relationship, which is the younger generation's eyes he truly is an uncle to my son, and uh, but you know the me, the older generation just grew up in a slightly different time, and I see I see it a little more differently. And you know, with with that younger eyes, the, the younger child's eyes and knowledge, he he helps me to understand things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, one of the other great things about this show is there's an authenticity to it, you know, in the, in the costumes, in the sets, um, in the characterizations. Did you do any research into the period at all to kind of get inside the mindset of this guy? Uh, yeah, I did a lot of reading. Um, uh, the, the costumes helped an awful lot uh, with... Uh, that thing of getting into character. Um, they were all authentically made uh, with as close as you could get to the um, fabric uh, of that time. Um, getting close to the animals, actually, uh, the riding of the horses, the uh, taking care of horses. Uh, you, you know, every chance I got, I was... Uh, you know, saddling the horses up and just the learning the mechanics of being a horseman, um, dealing with the guns, having guns as, you know, just a part of your equipment of the day. You know, uh, I often said that, you know, if you, if you couldn't kill it, then uh, you were in trouble. So, you know, it was kill or be killed, uh, especially when, you yeah. know, these are people at, outside of the cities and all, kind of on their own. Mm-hmm. Very different from what you did on Law and Order, you know, very different in like setting and, uh, you know, uh, style of character. Uh, was that part of the appeal? Just kind of doing something a little more outdoorsy, a little, something a little oh, more? Yeah. Like, mm. Absolutely. <laughs> you, know, that, you know, I, <laughs> and especially, you know, I love New York City, but, you know, I was, I was, in, you know, I was doing that for a long time. So, 
you know, the opportunity to do a show where you get to be outdoors and running around and, uh, I don't know, expressing yourself uh, through a different lens. I mean, I think the people, excuse me, 150 years ago, mm-hmm. a lot of similarities, but they were a different breed, a different, they were a different species uh, and simply because, you know, the, they didn't have iPhones, computers, telephones, electricity, you know, all these conveniences, cars, roads, none of these conveniences. So they, that I think that developed a different type of human being. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, now, you guys shot some of this on real plantation. Mm-hmm. Like that. You froze up. I said, what did, uh, what did that add to it, shooting on a real plantation? What was the feeling like, you know, shooting this show with this storyline at a real location like that? Um, there were a couple things. Number one, the, the opulence of it was uh, uh, awe-inspiring mm-hmm. uh, because there was nothing else around. It was just this one central manor which served not only as a household, but as a uh, linchpin of industry uh, for the area. Um, The vastness, uh, the scale, um, in combination with what was next to it were the slave huts, which, you know, so you've, you know, it was like having a, 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 Microsoft or the headquarters of Apple next to a ghetto. (laughs) Yes. That's what it was. Um, it was the heat, the unrelenting heat, mm-hmm. um, and uh, also, uh, you know, uh, cotton plants are really uh, unpleasant uh, beasts. They're 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 prickly and harsh and scrubby and scratchy and uh, so yeah, that's what it was like. So it was a combination of uh, you can't believe how grand uh, one section lived. And how miserably the other did the other did, the other section did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm from the south. I've been to a couple of uh, plantations like that. Where are you from? I, it, North Carolina. Where? Uh, Charlotte. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I've I've been to a couple of those places, and you really do get this this sense of what you said grandeur, but at the same time, like wow, you know how what built this is yeah. free labor. Know, yeah. Um, you know, and the show really talks about a, a segment of American history that's so unpleasant to relive. And But I think one of the extraordinary things it does about it, though some of the things are hard to watch in the show, it's also incredibly entertaining. I mean, it's it's like an adventure series. Yeah, yeah I think that's, that was their marching orders, I think. I think they wanted to make something really ad, uh, an adventure. They wanted something that was a, a, a ride. But uh, uh, as far as the time and place, you know, I actually think that it's a vital time and place. I think we've heard and seen a lot uh, on the Civil War, and um, the Civil War has been studied far more than – what happened? What truly led up to, you know, a civil war just doesn't happen. And I think, uh, you know, th- they were very smart in, in picking the time before the uh, kegs blew. You know, someone, where was the uh, the fuse lit? And I think, you know, it's burning right now. And I, I just find that, that burning, that, that fire almost reaching the powder keg, a really, um, you know, intense and, and, and vibrant time. It is, yeah. And I think also in, you know, a tribute to the writing and the acting in this, there's an immediacy to it and there's a contemporary feeling to it. You know, in other words, it's not the feeling that even though you're watching something from a period, there's not the the feeling that this, you know, people... Uh, I know. I think I know what you're That's saying. Right. Do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'll say this. I, I think they were smart enough to say, "Look, let, we're going to contemporize this mm-hmm. storytelling from 1857. Uh, we're going to make it in in such a way that is truthful, but also at the you know to be, I think, very blunt, sexy, dangerous, adventurous. I mean, these are all things that are kind of timeless in what humans attract humans. You know, and 
you know, things haven't changed that much. I mean, it was uh, adventurous and, and dangerous and, and, you know, I guess sexy time. Mm -hmm. And it makes it feel very relevant to today, you know, with everything that's going on in the country and, you know, like it, it makes it feel as if, you know, it's, it's important to understand what happened back then so that it doesn't happen again, you know? Well, you know, I, th I think uh, every generation is, is caught up in um, topics that are of incredible immediacy and importance to that time and place. You know, for me, it was uh, nuclear, the nuclear option, nuclear war. Uh, now, I think it's global warming. You know, back then it was the emancipation of a people, uh, you know, or, or the enslavement of people simply based on their color, their race. Um, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's always something. It's always, uh, how about gay rights? You know, it's, it's always uh, an important topic mm -hmm. to be fought over. Mm -hmm. And this show really struck a chord with people not just i mean you've got the approval of audiences and critics and you've just mm -hmm. been renewed for a second season um so where do you see the show going uh in, to the civil uh, war mm -hmm. i think that's how they've planned it that you know uh, 1857 uh, doesn't begin and end with uh, some runaway slaves it's the process and how this uh this act of retaliation or or uh um, th this act, this act of uh, not kowtowing to the system, where is that going to lead to? And you know, now then it will have to go into the political realm, and you know, leading up to the Emancipation Proclamation. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be certainly something uh, not just fascinating, but grand to see on a television screen. I mean, I think it's really indicative. Lush again. I was saying that I think that seeing the Civil War portrayed on television uh, would be something quite grand and epic and really kind of indicative of, of the direction that television is heading, you know, where they're telling these bigger stories. Um, uh, did you hear that? I just heard the, uh, the bigger stories that TV, TV's telling. Yes. Okay. Well, that was the, <laughs> that was the gist of the point I was making. Um, so is it an, an exciting time to be working in television now? I, I don't think there's ever been a better time. I think um, the possibilities are wide open. I think by virtue of the uh, economic landscape and the f financial constraints of making movies and getting them out there to be seen, uh, you know, that's why I think TV is so good right now. Uh, you know, if, if anything, there's a, an embarrassment of choices. So everyone who watches Underground, uh, just want you to know, uh, all of us really appreciate it. <laughs> well, I watch it, and I'm glad you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, you know, it, no, it's no joke, you know, for us. It's that you know, there's a lot of good quality shows out there. So you know, if if you want to make it, it's not good enough to be good. You have to have people find it, and then you know. So much appreciated to all of you out there. Absolutely. Um, so lastly, uh, this being an awards website, I must ask you: uh, you received an <laughs> Emmy nomination about ten years ago. For your work on Law and Order, what did that recognition mean to you as as an actor? Well, <laughs> <laughs> let me say this: um, it was such a shock to me, and I think I handled it really poorly. <laughs> I did, and um, uh, you know uh, that was it. I. Uh, you know, now with the, the uh, uh, benefit of, of years gone by, you know, it was fantastic. But, uh, you know, I was just so happy to be uh, a steadily employed actor on a show I loved. You know, so when they said, oh, you got nominated, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I just moved on with my day as opposed to, no, 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 no. It, you know, you've been nominated. You must recognize that, which is, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, so what my uh, father, my uh, deceased father told me at the time, he said, because I didn't know what to do with it. And he goes, well, he goes, don't sweat it. This is one of those things you handle, you, you accept with grace. Mm -hmm. 
So um, there you go. You accept it with grace. It was great. Well, this is a great show, and uh, thank you so much for your time, and congratulations on it. Thanks very much. My pleasure. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too.